What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Cooper Stuff. We have a seriously sick episode today. We have two <laughs> special guests. Number one, we've got my wife. What's up? The introvert has landed. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make her speak today. Uh, she's not comfortable with. But we've got a huge special guest. I am so very excited. I'm going to let her kind of give her own bona fides because she's done way too much. But I will say I know her most from the best show on TV as a co-host on The Five, which is on Fox News, which I love. So here she is, Dana Perino. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm glad that we got the introvert. Um, I am actually have a thought about that that I would maybe share in this interview. Um, so thanks for having me. Um, I think that the thing you might not know about me is that when I was in college, I worked uh, at KCCY FM 96.9 in Pueblo, Colorado, and I was a country music DJ working overnights for minimum wage um, because back then you uh, really needed to start in radio if you wanted to get in television. And I didn't want to put in my time after graduation, so I did it on the weekends. Um, and that was the year that Achy Breaky Heart was the number one song. <laughs> I will tell you, I played that song so many times. I still have it in my head. Um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I grew up in Wyoming, born in Wyoming, grew up in Colorado, um, uh, grad, wanted to be in media, in news, um, but then I think I, I, I just kind of fell out of love with it, and I wasn't sure if that's what I wanted to do, and I was a lot of anxiety about changing my direction at that time, because when you're young, you think that if you don't pursue that particular dream at that time, that it'll be over. Mm -hmm. And I never thought I'd work in television. And here I am. As you said, I get to be uh, the co-host of the five. I also co-anchor America's Newsroom. It's a news show from 9 to 11 a.m. with my very wonderful co-anchor, Bill Hemmer. And um, get a lot of, I do a lot of things here at Fox for elections and things like that. Um, podcasts. And uh, then I wrote this book uh, that uh, I just put out called Everything Will Be Okay. Life Lessons for Young Women from a Former Young Woman. Yes. <laughs> it's a great title. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so spoiler alert, probably Cooper stuff fans already know, uh, I love politics and we got to go, the fans might not know this. We got to go be a guest at the five one time and got to meet all of you guys, which was one of our coolest things totally. we've ever done. Really? Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. Just, Seriously. We love the five. It's my son's screensaver on his phone. The picture. Yeah. Um, you guys. Who was yeah. there that day? Uh, Greg Gutfeld, which uh, is w one of my man crushes. Um, I love Greg Gutfeld. I don't actually have man crushes, but you get it. Yeah, um, I got it. Katie was there. Katie. Oh, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. And Juan and Jesse was Jessie. there. Great. Great crew. Great crew. It was good Such one. a great crew. Everybody was so lovely and wonderful. So I love the five. And I watched you quite a lot on uh, the daily briefing. Um, yeah. And, and we we got to mention this, that you are, were the the... First female Republican yeah. press secretary in American history. Come on. That's you amazing. Uh, how <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it is kind of interesting that the first woman ever was Dee Dee Myers. She was Bill Clinton's press secretary. And then let's see, that would have been 1992. And then I came along in 2007. Wow. So it had been a while, but now there's so many women. I don't know if there will ever be another man press secretary. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, yeah, very sexist of Dana to say that right here. Ella. <laughs> that, that's fine if that's what she thinks. No, um, that's really cool. Um, and so now you're you're on in the morning. So I watched you this morning talk about you know uh, foreign policy with Russia, yeah, with Minnesota going on, and I was thinking, why in the world is she going to be on Cooper stuff? Because you're way too smart for me. But I've got two people here now smarter than me. So just to set the record straight, if Which you means guys you're want, smarter than us because you know how to surround yourself by smart people. Well, then that's in the book. That's in the book. So <laughs> we should get into the book so we promote it so people get it. Okay. This is what it looks like right here, people. Check that out. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, um, thank you. Everything will be okay. Life lessons for young women from a former young woman. So mm -hmm. we obviously have Corey here today. Yes, she's here. a woman. I did read your book and I loved it. Oh, um, thanks. So you. I kind of want to start from the a little bit of the beginning. Um, you have a quote in there that says, "There has never been a better time to be a young, educated woman in America." Is and I kind of feel like maybe I'd like to get your comments on that. You're coming from a conservative perspective. 
Um, and this could be an actually a controversial statement these days in some circles. Yeah. So kind of curious at your core, you know, your thoughts on these things. Well, I, it's interesting. But part of the thing is for me, um, I, I, I was a first there uh, in my life. I was the first Republican woman press secretary. And that like, means it means a lot. And women have had a lot of firsts. Men have had a lot. Like there's a lot of firsts. Um, think about Kamala Harris. She's the first black um, uh, woman to hold uh, the high, one of the highest offices, the two highest offices in the land. And I, I love, I, I think firsts are really great, but then I also think that you also, then if you have that opportunity, then you have to one, do a really good job and then two, move on. Right. Because it, you can be the first, but then what did you, what did you do with that time? I mean, um, I, I also feel that if you are born in America, you already won life's great lottery, 100%. Yeah. Right. Like, what's the difference? I talked to this young woman the other day. She's in Afghanistan. She's a reporter there. Um, and she said, I couldn't believe it. She was just talking. She, she, she sounds so wise. She's only 26 years old. Wow. And, but she said, I feel like an 88 year old lady. And my assistant is the same or her same age. And she got, we got off the phone and she said, I see what you mean about being born in America. Like what's the difference between the two of us? Right. The fact that God had you born here. I mean, so one, so if you are born in America and you're an educated woman mm -hmm. and all these women have done all these first and you might do some too, I hope you do. Um, then the only thing you really have to decide is how hard do you want to work? Right. And regardless if you're a liberal or conservative, you know, the way I am, this way I think the, in terms of my maybe I, maybe it was a, a little bit of my upbringing um, that I grew up in uh, Wyoming and Colorado and you know what you see is what you get there although it's really interesting mm -hmm. sometimes um, I have a friend here whose family um, all pretty center right conservative people except for the one brother and they're like where did you come from but you know sometimes <laughs> people just have like a, a different outlook on life or a different personality and you talk about being an introvert and Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite books is called Quiet. Have you ever I have read it? Yeah, it's a yes. great book. And it, for some reason in our society, we think that extroverts are like all the rage and are, they're all that's the <laughs> best. And like they, they should they get all the glory when it's actually the introverts that are doing all the work <laughs> and, coming, and, and coming up with all the great ideas. And so um, it really does take all kinds. And when it comes to politics, I'm certainly interested and I very much care deeply about this country. I'm a proud American and a patriot. Um, but I also will never, ever lose a friend over politics. Mm. Like, absolutely not. Because I mean, what, this is what I don't want to cross in your book is that you there you're so, so accomplished and intelligent, but there's a humility about you and a, a graciousness and the fact that you want to mentor people. I'm like, this is pretty spectacular that she doesn't live just for herself, you know, is completely ambitious, but she wants to pay it forward. She wants to equip other people. She is humble enough to surround herself with people that she would even consider smarter than her. So yeah. can you kind of speak to like, that's your perspective on life, like at your core, you're a grateful, thankful yeah. person. Yeah, so thank you. Um, you know, my, in Wyoming, um, like one of the worst things you could do is ever think that you were um, better than somebody else. Like if you were told you're too big for your britches, that was like that meant you were like really not good you know and um in in some ways you can maybe overdo that a little bit right because you have to have enough confidence to be able to think all right i'm i got something here i'm gonna i'm gonna give this a shot um when it comes to giving back i mean one of the things about this book is that my uh, ability to become or when i became white house press secretary that was not because i had this plan to be the white house press secretary all these things happened along my life, including being on the five. Look, I'm sure that you guys get this too, right? Like, I want to be a rock star. I want to be a songwriter. Or I want to be like, how do you do it? And they, and young people, they want you to give them a plan. Right. And the thing is, like, there is no plan. When I look back, I was just ready for the opportunity. But the kind the, of took me by surprise. The five took me completely by surprise. Mm. And I was at, actually at an airport. I just come home from Africa from a service trip. And... I was so surprised. I called and said, would you come up and do the show called The Five? I was like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what, in the middle of New York in the summertime? Like, oh, I have this lovely house and we rented a place in Annapolis and everything was... And I called my husband. You know, he is an international businessman and he was in North, uh, North Korea. South Korea, obviously. And 
I, I was, it was late there. I called him. It was like maybe there 10 hours ahead or something. And the first thing he said was congratulations. And I, he said, this is what you always wanted to do. And sometimes <laughs> you can get in that mode where you, where you have to remember, I love this phrase that wherever you are in your life, when you start working, like, try to remember when this is the only thing you ever wanted. Because yeah. then you, you obviously, as you said, we have ambition and we want more, but just remember there was a time when that was all you wanted. Mm -hmm. And so I feel this tremendous responsibility mm -hmm. to give back. And also I love it. Mm -hmm. I love this younger generation. I find them absolutely adorable, very sweet. I get a kick out of them and they have such big hearts and a lot of ambition and, and they just need a little bit of guidance. Like we just expect them to know that you, how you're supposed to address uh, dress at the office or handle managing up or of course it, it, they seem like they don't get that necessarily from anywhere else so now I feel like this was just like the one modern updated guy like here's your little how to but I'm not going to tell you exactly how to do it I'm going to tell you how to do it how to get yeah. there right right teaching teaching someone to fish rather than feeding them a fish right <laughs> right. Well, I think that's good. I think it's good. Uh, what, what, what your husband said about, um, or I don't remember what you just said, but you said something about this is what you always wanted when things get yep. bad. That's good advice for marriage too. <laughs> <laughs> remember, this is what you wanted, honey. <laughs> nice. oh, this is what you wanted. No. Um, well, you know, the other thing that he did is that I was really super stressed. I was like, but I'm going to be in New York. And like, what about you? And, and I'll never forget. And I recommend people do this, especially for young women in their lives whether you're dating or the, the parents or a, a husband, um, recognize that like, there's a lot of anxiety that comes from being a woman. I don't know why. It's just, we think a lot, we overthink a lot and it's just the way that we are. And I love that, obviously I can tell this beautiful relationship that you two have, it's probably very similar to my husband and me. And on that call, when I was so worried about how are we gonna move to New York? A little, little, he said, leave it to me. Nice. You focus on the job, I'll take care of the move. <laughs> nice. And he did. And look, was it perfect? No. Right. <laughs> yeah, but that's a boss move. I, I, <laughs> I like that. My, Corey would love that. Had I ever done that one time ever in our relationship, she would love that. That's I got amazing. it. We, we have, have an opportunity goals, tonight. Right? <laughs> um, I would like to say something. No, go ahead. Uh, as, as Dana says on the five to Greg, permission for me to, to, you know, you always say it, you get permission, permission to make an analogy. analogy. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to mention this. I, I should have started with it, that obviously the book is written from, to women specifically, but it's, I, I, I'm reading it. It doesn't seem yeah. um, not, yeah. manly, but, but this seems to me is more like uh, old wisdom. Th this is things that, that has been passed down for generations and generations. Yeah. And maybe we are, we are losing some of these things. And what I'm struck with is when you go back to the basics, you're, you're going to find whether it's sports, whether it's marriage, relationships, whatever, you go back to the basics and you'll find yourself being successful. Do yeah. you agree with that? It's not just for girls, even though there's a it lot- It really isn't. And um, I'm sure you know Trey Gowdy. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he uh, interviewed me and he said, that he got a ton out of it for himself to use that in his own career. But he said it also really helped him as a manager and a father. Mm. Beautiful. So yeah. I, it, it, yes, I, you know, I did specifically target it to women, but it doesn't make, I, I know I, sometimes I think back, maybe I shouldn't have. Um, oh no, I think it's nice to have something specific. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I hope that um, people get, although um, my husband said that he thinks every man should read it so that men will understand that they'll never fully understand women. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Fair enough. That, Fair he enough. sounds like a smart guy to me. <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you what I learned, what I learned from it already. You say towards the beginning to find your loud voice, uh, but no strong how voice, to use it. strong voice, a uh, strong voice, but, but know when to use it. Mm. And I found my strong voice <laughs> but I haven't always figured out when to use it. I use it all the time, you yeah. know, like Star Wars episode one sucks. It's the worst thing ever. You know, Hulk and the Avengers in game should sound like the Hulk and not Mark Ruffalo. I don't need to get so angry about these things, but you, you're a really good example of that. And I want to tell you this, and then you can riff on it if you want to Dana. So in my bus, 
I have 11 employees outside of my band members. And um, most of my employees are not like me, meaning they are not Christian. They are not conservative. They're atheists, agnostic, okay. leftist, some of them. And whenever I turn on the five, a lot of them get mad. But every time they go, yeah, but that Dana one, the Dana's the sense. nice one. Yeah. <laughs> She makes some sense. <laughs> She's the one that keeps her head. I can deal with Dana, but I don't want to deal with any, but you do a pretty, I think you do a really great job of that of getting along with people. Well, I think that, um, one, um, like I always, like, I, I, like with, with most people or most women in particular, like you want to be liked. <laughs> um, but also <laughs> I learned over time that to be respected mm -hmm. is also really important. And I, I find that if I, um, um, am too, Re, uh, reserved. I'm not going to be effective or entertaining uh, or persuasive in any way. But if I come on too hot all the time, mm. no one's going to listen to me. Mm. And um, I, I think that one of the great things about the five is that um, you get you get different personalities from every, like you have those band members. But then, like you said, like you're you're like the Greg Gutfeld guy, and then like there will be a Jesse guy. And um, that's what I, I think that our show is, is wonderful from that perspective. Um, but the other thing about finding the strong voice is this, like, I can't stand it that young people are not realizing that when they're talking like this all the time and it's like <laughs> that, and you know what I mean? And that will never get you hired. <laughs> yeah. It will not get you promoted. Mm -hmm. You will never be chosen to go to the client meeting. <laughs> you will not get to do, do any of the travel. And like, you have to find your strong voice. My concern is that a lot of young people don't even realize that they're doing it. Yeah. So we have a responsibility to gently take them aside and say, you might not even realize. Mm. And actually I've, but I've, I've done this a couple of times and sometimes they don't. And guess what? They can break the habit like that. Mm. Wow. And the other thing is about finding your strong voice is especially for young women starting out. Like if you have a chance to go to the meeting on behalf of your boss, like, you better not be a little mouse. You better, you better, you better be a good listener, but make your point in a, you know, in a strong way. And sometimes, you know, you have to gear yourself up to do that. Um, I remember that. Oh my gosh. Did you guys read the part about where I got kicked out of the Oval Office? Yes. yes. I was so mortified. I'd only been on the job like three days. It wasn't my fault that there was this miscommunication, but because there was a miscommunication, 43 was irritated and another person but he looked at me and he said and therefore she doesn't need to be here and then he went like this towards the door oh, yeah. honestly i could have died oh. and like <laughs> think about what it took for me to go back to the oval office like the next day mm -hmm. he didn't even remember um i actually asked him about it five or six years later we were on a plane and you know how well you guys are on a bus like you know how sometimes you just gotta figure out a way to shoot the breeze so i said mr president do you remember when you kicked me out of the oval office I said, I never did that. I said, no, don't you remember? And I was wearing this thing and then you were standing here and I was standing there and then this happened and then Dan said this. And, and he was like, no, I don't remember that at all. I have no recollection about it. But I remembered every single bit of that embarrassment. Mm. And I, 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 I remember he said, are you still upset? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, no, I've been the press secretary. I'm on the five and I'm still mad that I got kicked out of the Oval <laughs> office in 2005. Um, but helping younger people learn to let things like that go. Mm. Oh, very, very good. Yeah. I, I found your book super helpful in the, you know, like we all can have big dreams and aspirations, but I think a lot of young people have the big dreams. And if things don't work out immediately for them, they give up, they feel inadequate. They don't have the grit to take the steps that it takes to get there. And you have this great quote in your book that says, you have to work and work at getting better at work. And then you <laughs> give a bunch of practicals, even posture, yeah. even as you're saying, oh, gosh, yes. you know, <laughs> breathing from your diaphragm and speaking so that, you know, anyways, you want to throw in some of your practicals, not to spoil the whole book. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, there's, there's something also I really love called the five minute pickup. And I learned this when I was a kid, my mom, you know, like, like when the house gets chaotic, and there's too many toys out and everything. My mom would be like, okay, five minute pickup. And that meant everybody, including my dad, drop everything and start picking stuff up. Um, I recommend a five minute pickup for your desk every day because a lot of places have like these open plans where it's like a cubicle situation. Let me just tell you something. The boss walks by, 
and they see chaos at your cubicle, that is not confidence inspiring in any way. Take five minutes every day, clean out your email inbox, clean up your area, make sure that you are ready to go so that when you hit the ground on Tuesday morning, you're not dealing with Monday night's mess. And, right. and so there's this young woman who works on outside my office. I don't want to give her name away, Did but she, um, she was here really, really late one afternoon. She works very early morning, Fox and Friends. I was like, what are you doing here? So I have to get my desk ready so that I could even do a five minute pickup. Um, and she's kept up on it. And I've, I've really loved that. Um, you know, I think that there's a, a skill in managing up. And I think that when you say that you have a band and with that many employees, um, you might not realize it, but they are managing up all the time. Mm. Like what's their job? They have to make sure like, do you have what you need? And you're going to have, you're, you're the, he's the one's going to have to be out there. Mm -hmm. Does he have what he needs? Like, and so you're constantly managing up. I think it's an undervalued skill mm -hmm. that people don't realize. And I really encourage people to try to think about that. And I give some tips in the, in the book as to how to do that, keeping them informed, knowing how they like things. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I had this one person, she used to work for me. I come in from you know, get, getting here. I usually walk to the office. Well, not anymore. Cause it's kind of um, too dark in the mornings now. Um, Cause I get here earlier. But I'd have a, two bags and maybe an umbrella. I'm, I'm taking off my coat and she's asking me 20 questions mm. about, well, this person needs to see you and they want to do this. I'm like, I can't think straight. <laughs> right, right. You know, and but you, you have to figure out like, does, does he need a cup of coffee before you ask him right. if he's willing to do a hundred more photos at the, after the event? Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, another thing that I think is cool that, again, I think is is kind of an old school trait, if you will, um, which is is loyalty. And, yeah. and that's in the book. Yeah. But I've also noticed that I'm also a fan of of uh, I'll tell you what, which is the podcast that you do yeah. with Chris Starro. I like Chris yeah. Starro, too. I love his yeah. laugh. He's got a funny, uh, boisterous, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> smoky laugh. Yeah. But uh, I've noticed he's a big that, guy too, so he got a big lap. Yeah, a, a bit, a big uh, presence. <laughs> um, but I've always noticed uh, with with the way that you are towards President Bush. Um, mm -hmm. Every time you've mentioned him, there's always a, a a fidelity and an appreciation and a respect, and that's almost out of style now, you know. <laughs> and uh, I think that's a bummer. Yeah, and the other thing that I loved is that when his mom came and she um, did a minute mentoring event for me and kicked it off for me oh. um she it she called him earlier that day and then she called me to get her remarks together and she said she describes these conversations and she said my conclusion is this your loyalty goes both ways <clears throat> and so um yes yeah, so, you know i got to see president bush a couple of weeks ago in dallas for a little book event and then he has one coming out so i interviewed him um, it's lovely to be able to call him a friend now as well. But I also think that that loyalty there, it's deep and abiding and also it's super rewarding. Yes. You know, if you, if you can be loyal to your, fr your friends or your family, your spouse, whatever it might be, you know, it's rewarding because it goes mm -hmm. both ways. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Beautiful. What do you got, babe? Um, how much more time do we have? We have six minutes. Well, do you want to do <laughs> you still have six minutes, Dana? I have six minutes, sir. Okay, great. And I'll, I am so sorry I'll talk if you're thinking. You, well, you had the big question at the end, so maybe I do have a big question at the why end. Don't you just go for that. All right, let me ask well, one other one. Can I? Yeah. yeah. Um, it is just this. Um, well, no, I'll wait for that. I'll wait for that. The big question I want to know at the end, <laughs> and you can answer now, or we can wait. I am curious. We're obviously living in such a volatile time, and I think that we're all three of us roughly the same age. I keep asking people. Number one, am I right in thinking that this is weirder and more chaotic than it was than it's been in our lifetimes or am i crazy am i right about that or am i just i, have, I you know, think so i think so i remember i used to ask president believe it or not i used to get the same question when i was press secretary oh, wow. so oh. i wonder if this just is if we're just in a perpetually weird time or if everyone always thinks this um i remember asking president bush about it because i thought he was going to get asked in an interview about it and he said you know dana when i came out of college Americans were literally fighting each other in the streets in 1968. Mm. And, you know, we're not doing that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think social, I think one of the reasons it's so weird is social media. 
is, yeah. is warped and distorted a lot of things. Technology, for as wonderful as it is in many ways, it's also just so different. Think about your business and how that's changed seem really like in 10 years, right? In terms of streaming versus uh, record and DVD sales. Um, so I do think that it is weirder. Bill Hemmer and I say that we feel like we're, the world is upside down and we're in a snow globe. Like what is going on every day? But mm. I also think that um, there's so much good and this country has so much to offer all of us and it's worth fighting for and worth um, treating each other with all the love and dignity and respect and also to find moments of joy. I think you know, obviously what we do is we talk about the news. We can provide some entertainment a little bit on the five, but think about what you do. This is so important. Right. People need to feel the opportunity to have joy and creativity and to respect the, uh, the art uh, that, that comes from music or like when I say that the president's paintings in this new book, um, uh, whether it might be a hobby that people came up with during COVID, there's just... Mm -hmm. um, there's so much good that I almost get really overwhelmed by it. If you think about the, the frontline workers and how many people volunteered to help them. And I, I think in some ways, if we could mute the politicians. Mm. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Let's cancel all politicians. Like, if, like, if you could just put them on mute for a, a few weeks, think about how calming that all might be. Yes. Yeah. I, well, absolutely. So it sounds like you're saying, that you do have hope for America, right? Of That's course, so yes, exactly. Not always, always. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I'll, fi I'll finish with the right, question. One last question. Okay, so in the book, you're always talking about um, basically bettering yourself, um, mm -hmm. having goals, and you know, you listen to like a bajillion podcasts in your spare time and read books and everything else. Um, but then you have, you have the question, uh, what is the biggest problem you are trying to solve? Mm -hmm. um, that question thrown to you in this season of your yeah. life. Oh, baby. So. Um, I, it's a, it's so interesting you asked this. So I pressed send on the final draft of the book right before Christmas of 2020. And that's a great feeling, right? Every weekend I worked on that book for a year and <laughs> now it's, it's, it's out the door and it's finalized. And there was a request from the CEO and the president of Fox news asking if I could do a zoom call with them on the next Monday. And I thought it was um, like end of year check-in because we were working remotely and I thought they were just maybe going around, you know, making the rounds. So I didn't even think about the meeting really. And I wasn't, you know, sometimes you, if you get a notice that you have a, on Friday that you have a meeting on Monday, you might worry about it all weekend, mm -hmm. but I, it, that wasn't the case at all. And then we get on the phone and they said, well, we have an idea and we would like to make you the co-anchor with Bill Hemmer from nine to 11 AM instead of the daily briefing from two to three and still do the five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we noticed that. I was like, I was is, like she, man. is she ever going to not work? It's and that's, nice. that is the, um, look, I signed up for it. Uh, they, they, people here have been trying to be as helpful to me as they possibly can and understanding. Um, I don't know if you've seen, it's not like official policy, but I'm mostly not doing the five on Fridays. Mm. But that's partly because I have to work Sunday night <laughs> in order to get ready for Monday morning. So yeah. the biggest problem I'm trying to solve is something that I write extensively about in the book, which is work-life balance. Mm. Um, I actually love work and I love what I do. Sure. So it's not so much like I'm like, it's the biggest problem. And look, a lot of people right now that you might ask them, what's the biggest problem they're trying to solve? They're like, well, they've been out of work for a year because they're, they haven't been able to travel on the road. Of mm -hmm. course, sure. or maybe they lost a loved one, uh, or they're dealing with health challenges. Like I recognize right now that if, if my biggest problem I'm trying to solve is I just got to figure out how to deal with this schedule, um, then I'm in I'm in pretty good shape. Sure, sure. Well, as always, that's a very good outlook and a very uh, uh, grateful, yep. which we're not we have time to get into. But you talk about gratitude in the book a lot, which I think is very important. Well, I have a lot of gratitude for one, you one even being willing for you got for you two to be willing to talk to me, and I'm so excited that I'm on the bus with you for the first time. I'm going out, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I really, really love what you do, and I think that this is a terrific creative outlet for you. And you might be reaching people. You so you might have no idea what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, every week to reach out to people and you're a friendly voice in their ear and they probably look forward to it so much. Well, I oh, hope so. You. That's very kind. Uh, 
Very kind. Well, I sure had a great time. I want to make sure everybody sees the book. It's such a, it's just so cool. Book. Look how, it's just such a beautiful, thank you. beautiful book. Sorry, Everything thanks. will be okay. Follow Dana Perino online. Watch her on the thank five you. and on the newsroom in the morning, which I always watch. I'm, I'm an you. avid watcher. Hey, tell so. your band members. I'm big fans of theirs too. Oh, that's very nice. I will. <laughs> well, thanks so much for doing okay. this. I appreciate you being on Cooper stuff. And I'm, uh, by the way, you just said it was the first time you've ever been on the bus with us. That mm -hmm. makes it sound to me like you want to come and be on the bus again. I'm I'd just saying. To. I'd love to. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Have a great one. It's been Take care. Be safe. Wonderful. Bye. Hey, guys, I want to take a quick break to remind you about my book, Awake and Alive to Truth. Finding truth in the chaos of a relativistic world. Have you noticed? It's a little chaotic right now. And this book talks about some of the philosophies of the day that kind of got us to where we're at right now. Some of the things that are so confusing. And this book tells you how to find truth, eternal truth that never changes. I think you're going to like it. It's great for teenagers, by the way. And we have group pricing. Only available on my website, johnlcooper.com/slash/awake. I hope you dig it. Read the Bible.